guys, we're back. Part three. Um, so this will probably be the last part for tonight because it's like 11 something now and yeah, I have a performance tomorrow and Maple has to be up tomorrow. We have to write lesson plans for kids. Woo so this will be the third part and we'll get the other parts up soon. Yeah, yeah, we'll have another session soon. But, um, but I mean three videos should probably hold you guys over for a while. Yeah. Right? Right? If you're going to watch an hour, we hope we're funny. Yeah. Um, oh, God, what if, like, these are so horrible and no one wants to watch this? They're actually, like, making fun of it because it's so bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, but if you guys were wondering, um, we found out that his hair color is officially bronze, which is not... It's not ginger. That's it's not ginger. that's not a ginger shade. Ginger. The the manga makes him ginger. Okay, well you know what? Fan art makes him ginger. <laughs> a lot of fan art makes him ginger. And you know what? They're wrong. Because his hair is bronze, which is a shade Ginger. Which is a shade of brown. <sighs> alright, alright, whatever. Alright, well, enjoy part three. See, if it was copper, I would give you a little bit more leeway with this, but it's bronze. Mm -hmm. It's bronze. Mm -hmm. Breakfast smells good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. I would, but I broke both my legs and my arms. <laughs> every day. Like, every morning, I'd break my arms and every night. With paper skin. Leg. And, and I, I... And I, uh, I cry myself to sleep. Oh, no, no. Um, the heart attacks put myself... <laughs> put me to sleep. Oh, man, that was horrible. I'm sorry, guys. I should remember my Spongebob <laughs> quotes. I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. That feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. That was me shuddering for her. Yeah, I know. Okay. However, as my eyes closed, I felt a hand place itself on the top of my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Uh? Huh? Morning. You alright? No, Sam, you do care. No, he doesn't. Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of my of the hand on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. I'm not going to mess up Kat's hair. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! You know, when I... Total 180. Right. You know, when I'm hungry and I have a gracious brother or mm -hmm. friend making me food, I always yell at them to make them go yeah. faster. Well, no when... No need to yell, Sam! Man, whoever wrote the script is really good. Yeah. You're yelling too! I'm yelling to you, not at you. Don't argue with me! He will beat you and send you to your room. Well, from behind me, Eric appeared and sat beside me, rubbing his temples in obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. They have a castle? Yeah, they're... they're castle? <gasps> For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at me and smirked at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. Whoa. Whoa. Sorry, I didn't come from a richer family. <laughs> Just a millionaire. Wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> Whatever. Soon. James, James and Damien appeared, hands full of plates that carried bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. They placed the place down by each seat before sitting themselves. Mm, my favorite. You. Finally. Thank you for the breakfast. It looks amazing. It's our pleasure. Okay. Hello? Hey! Good morning! Oh, it's Naomi. Hey, girl. Yes, he's at your door right now! Oh. Uh, there was a knock from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Suzu and Naomi were here. I'll get it. Uh -oh. No, you won't. My heart quickly began to pound in my chest. Matthew was in the lobby, and he moved on to the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed out of the dining room. As I passed through the archway between the... I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass doorknob, causing the world to go in slow motion. Matthew, don't! But before my words could reach his, his ears, Matthew had opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. Uh, um. That was a lot of dot dot dot, sorry. Yep. The world around me stopped as Suzu and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merely stared down in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. Uh. <laughs> Hi? 
Oh, he's so cute. I cannot believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was already bad enough. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sake, someone do something other than just stand there. Naomi. Matthew. Who are you? There you go, Suzu. Thanks, Suzu. Suzu. Let me, Let me explain. What's, What's going on here? Who's, Who's at, at the, the door, door Matthew? <laughs> they all came in a pack. Uh, of course. Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. Visitors, they're my brothers. They're in your head. Um, um visitors, visitors, I guess. Then why did one of them open the door? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Um, it's no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then, I felt a hand on my shoulder and felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. Oh, good. What is this creepy music? Uh, well, they're going to kill everyone. <laughs> oh, I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who we were? Everything seemed surreal. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Suzu and Naomi and sat across from their confused graves. As Naomi and Suzu sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing! Thank you! You're welcome. Our pleasure, ladies. Okay. We hope you enjoy your meal. Eric. Make sure you dig in! Oh, God. They spiked the food, didn't they? Oh. I looked at Naomi and Susan as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully, the food would ease their minds for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more and more red in the face. So, Anderson, are you going to tell us what's going on? Well, you see, uh... Gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Suzu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help her on the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense! It's such a huge house! Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Naomi. A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Damn it, Susan. Well... Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work, so she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, something like that. Damn it, Sam. <laughs> We're sorry if we make this situation awkward Susan and Sam would make a good couple. Yeah, I can see it. They're both wearing green. Yes. You know who else wears green? She. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <coughs> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. I assume they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Sam, not now. No. Well, I... I wanted I to help, help out. But at the same time... Oh, go ahead. No, you can do it. I wanted to go out with my friends. Oh, this is going to give us a choice. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. Alright, what do we want to do? Uh, let's go with our friends, because... Um... Are you sure? Yeah, that's true. We're going to make a good distraction. I'm sure. I trust these guys to be able to work everything out. Thank you for trusting us, miss. We'll have everything done for you by the time you return home. Alright, we'll wait here while you go get your things. I was strangely relieved to know that everything was going to be okay while I was gone from the house. 
I trusted the guys enough to do everything they could for the house party, and so my mind focused itself on hanging out with my friends. Eventually, I was out the door, walking towards Naomi's car with Naomi and Suzu. Suzu grabbed the entire back seat as I took the passenger side. Naomi started the car and drove off towards the city. Okay, there was a warning right there. Did you see that? No. It said warning something. Did it? Yeah. Well, maybe it'll pop up again. Well, Sorry about that. Guys. The house. He made us a little bit of a ball to walk around a bit. He did just eat breakfast after all. Yeah, that would be a good meal, though. Could have had more flavor, in my opinion. Suzu, you eat chili peppers when you're bored. Everything you eat always needs more flavor. Probably because you burnt all your taste buds off the, all the spice and shit. I still can't get over that, Suzu. Or you need to teach me something. What do you want? Mm. Are we admiring her or are we going like, what the fuck are you doing? I don't know. You pick. Mm, well, we'll just keep admiring her. Because we're always on her side. You just need to eat spicy food all the time. You gotta tame your mouth. Tame your mouth? Really, Suzu? Sounds typical. Anyways, after the mall, what do you want to do? We could go to the Pink Lady Cafe and chill out with Kay. I'm sure she'd love the company. But we have to stop by the arcade. They have this new game out called Orion. You get to control this guy named Isaku, and you're part of the rebel forces, and you get to shoot things, and there's robots, and... Sheesh, we get it, Suzu, we get it. We'll go to Aww, the arcade. Oh, look how happy she is. Which one first, though? You know how popular Kay is. She'll be swamped with customers later in the day. I'd rather go in the late afternoon. She has better options during the last hour of the cafe. We'll go early. So basically, after the arcade, he figured me out so quickly, Patterson. What did I tell you about using my- Well, let's go to- We'll go to cafe. Yeah. We hit the mall and we walked around a bit. So we planned before driving over to the Pink Lady Cafe. It was a small, homestyle cafe with a lot of pink, and when I mean a lot of pink, I mean a lot of pink. Looks like there's some purple in it, too. But we definitely caught Kay's attention as we walked in. Hey, girls! Hey! Oh my goodness! I'm so happy to see you! Have a seat! I'll be with you in a minute, okay? And there she is! As busy as usual! Told you we should have gone to the arcade first. Naomi glared at Suzu before leading us to a table to sit at. Suzu sat across from me as Naomi sat at the side. After a couple seconds of settling into our seats, Kay slid, in, slid into the empty four seat with a smile. So, how's, how's everything, everything been? My grandpa died. Life's always <laughs> crazy with you. But I can tell Suzu's not happy to be here. That kind of breaks my heart, you know. <laughs> Susie smirked and gently punched Kay in the shoulder, making Kay laugh. Naomi and I chuckled at the sight. Kay and Susie were like scissors. Sisters, not scissors. Scissors. <laughs> and they were cutting people up. <laughs> However, Kay didn't have any known relatives, so it was always nice to see her connect with Susie. How about you, Naomi? Have you figured out your problems? Not really. No. And now's not the time to talk about them, Kay. Oh. Well, I'm not sure what to do now. Naomi keeping secrets from us? That's a first. She a lesbian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she holds more than secrets, I'll tell you that much. Oh. So like You guys! Oh, look how nice she is. Don't worry about it, Naomi. You can tell us on your own time. Naomi stared at me briefly before smiling in relief and happiness. Thanks. Kay giggled as, as Suzu rolled her eyes and groaned. Eventually, the four of us just started to chat and talk about, what if Suzu and Naomi are a couple? Like, like she's in love with Suzu. That'd be cute. All right. Oh, okay. And then just focused on school. Sorry. Truly, though, it was relaxing to feel somewhat human again, without thinking about incubi or anything of that sort. Simply young adult pop. We eventually lost track of, uh, next lap. The, the hour of the house party had arrived. In my mind, I kept double and triple checking the essentials for the party. Knowing my daddy invited his business partners and these... What the? He's literally inviting our friends? Like, we're just inviting executives? Yeah. He doesn't even live there. Um, well, he's just trying to get us a good job. I stood in front of my mirror in my room, staring at my form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time, it wasn't. 
There was a chance to show my dad that I was better than her expectation. It was a chance for me to see my parents as a woman. Oh, my parents to see her as a woman. Anyway, it's my test to see if I was really ready to live on my own. We're going to look good. Can there be like a dress up mini game? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, not truly alone. I had the incubator to thank, but even so, I didn't have my dad guiding me or my mom helping me through living alone. Yeah, you literally did nothing. It was all of them. Yeah. A knock on my door broke my thoughts, surprisingly. Who is it? Hey, are you okay in there? Your parents should be here soon, so you can hurry up. Well, I'm ready, but... But what? I'm sure you look fine, Anderson. Just come on out. All, all right. right. As soon as I opened the door to the hall, I watched as Naomi and Suzu's face turn from smiles to look little, little G. Yep. Okay. Smiles to compete awestruck stares. What? Dude, you look hot. Yeah, you look amazing. Where did you get that dress? I've had it for a while. I just never had the chance to wear it. I figured I might as well bring it out now. Ooh. Oh, they have Texas. I stepped in my room and closed the door and behind me. As I walked down the hall to the grand lobby, the incubi stood waiting for me at the bottom, all dressed in the nines to the nines as proper servants. Whoa! They really know how to dress well, don't they? Yep. Yeah. yeah, they do. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I was slightly taken aback by how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had the poise of a perfect gentleman, even Sam. Um, he has his hands on his hip. That's not... It's a gentleman. Hands on his hip. <laughs> okay. It's sass. I slowly began to climb down the steps with Suzu and Naomi behind me. The boys watched as I descended the staircase one at a time, like knights waiting for their princess. I felt my face slightly flush as I quickly shook my head to try and regain my thoughts. As I reached the last step, James offered his hand to me and walked out down the final steps. The walked world. me down the final step. Why do I have, like, a message? Who's that? Uh, Kyle? No. Yeah. As beautiful as a princess, miss. I'm gonna be a horrible person, but it's gonna Oh, and me. Yeah! Look at you. Hey, guys. Wait, which one's... Oh, no, no. From Shia and Yukiko? Yeah. Oh, cool. So we just got some photos added to our Dropbox um, by the lovely uh, mm-hmm. Master, Master Cosplay, Cosplay and Photography. Photography. She is literally one of my favorite photo shoots. Yeah. She They're not photo shoots. Photo photographers okay. to work with. Um, Sorry. So she, she's really, really awesome. She literally just messaged me. So. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have any photo needs, go to her. Man, I'm turning into you name dropping everyone. Yeah. Well, when we have so many friends, like you just have to name drop. Yeah, now we're replying. Now where did. Okay, this one's the attorney. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, back to the game. Back to the game. As yeah. beautiful as a princess, miss. Thank you. So. Are you prepared for tonight? No. Nope. Yeah. Are you prepared to meet my dad, Dad? <laughs> dad. Oh, God, yeah, they're going to be on the same screen, aren't they? Yes, we don't even have to do it. I'm ready as I'll ever be. Yes, I'm ready. To be honest, no. As ready as I'll ever be. I couldn't deny that I was nervous, but I had to try. This party was more than what it was, and... I'd done all that I could do to prepare for it. Now it was up to fate. The other boy smiled assuringly at me. Which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rang. I gulped. I could practically feel my dad's aura from behind the door. <laughs> Sam and Eric quickly rushed to the door and opened the double doors wide open to reveal my parents, both dressed in their best. That's Dad! Dad, what are you doing here? Hey, Dad. Mom. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Look at this guy who oh looks my. Exactly like you. I didn't know your bequeathment came with servants. Mom's like, I wish I took that. Mm-hmm. It was probably overlooked. Besides, who would deny good service? Thanks, Dad. I was completely shocked. My parents didn't question the boys. They didn't ask for verification or anything. I looked at the boys and noticed Sam and Eric sta- staring st- intently at my parents. Were they using their powers on them? Well, no, that, that broke the agreement. They yeah. can't be. They had to be. There was no other way to be okay with this otherwise. I guess the servants counted as belongings to the house. Oh. oh. Dad, can't talk that way. My mother quickly rushed to me and gave me a large hug. A huge large. I Are hug- you okay? No. I hugged her back, inhaling her perfume. It had only been a few days, but living away from the one who raised me was hard. My mother soon let me go and looked at my oh, outfit. Gorgeous! You look so lovely. 
David, look at your daughter and tell her I'm right. <laughs> She's all right, but I'm yeah. in jewel with blue crest. <laughs> oh God, that's I'm sorry, guys. That's that's a story for another time. I looked at my dad, who was looking around the lobby like an inspector. I stood my ground, waiting for him to look at me. When he did, he let a smile, small smile grace his lips. Your mother's right. You look like you're all grown up. Oh, thanks, Dad. Do you love me? <laughs> Do I just want your love, Dad? Please. The world, uh, the world around me stopped as my heart pounded hard in my chest. Did my dad just compliment me? On his own accord? My mother was grinning ear to ear with, at his words. I was beyond speechless. Thank you, Daddy. However, his cold face re quickly returned as he began to look around once again. I assume that you're ready, then, to impress the rest of the guests, correct? Yeah, I've been learning juggling, Dad. Yeah. What do you mean? The entire board from Anderson Toys is coming. Really, Dad? You can't tell Even us? the vice chairman's son will be coming. Ooh. All of them will be measuring your potential. My, My potential? To become CEO of the company. Oh. Uh... I knew it. Something was off about tonight, and now this party had become more, much more than I anticipated. I gulped silently, but I nodded in response. I looked to the incubi, but they were continuing to be servants for my father's approval. I looked behind me and saw Naomi and Susie raise their thumbs at me for encouragement. I let out a small, small, small breath before feeling my body accept the situation. I felt a weight in my gut, but I had to hide it. As if time zoomed forward, all of a sudden the main hall of the lobby was full of guests. Men and women in formal and business attire showed up to meet me in my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but I was once again surprised that night. I shook hands with many officials and executive members. Our stairwell was still still barren, mm -hmm. putting on the professional face my dad trained me to have. I felt overwhelmed, but I hid it well behind a small smile and a handshake. Many even asked me questions. I tried my best to reply as maturely as possible. I had to remember. Say what they want to hear, not what you want to say. So... How do you feel living on your own at such a young age? Fuck off. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, oh, we get like seven choices. Okay, well, I uh, uh, feel fine. Could be better, to be honest. Uh, it's been okay, I guess. I'm, I'm so gonna... sorry about your grandfather passing away. It really hit off. We have a time limit? Sorry, but I want to talk about that. Excuse me, I need to go. Thanks for your condolences. Do you have college plans? Mostly live in the present, and so oh no. Um, it's kind of up in the air, we'll see. Yes, I do. Okay. Because we do. I felt like the questions came out one after another. It's tough to answer some of them because they weren't about me, they were about the company. What do you think will happen with the company now that your grandfather has passed? Um, depends on who rents, I guess. I will get back to track soon. I don't really care. It's hard to say. I'm I not exactly doing I say that depends What do you on think of the philanthropic policy the company has? Oh my god! Pay attention to it. I'm thirsty. It's policy that reflects on my own values. I'm very pretty. Do you think the company should expand oh into this toys? Um, um, it's a toy company. It's a possibility. Eventually, the question stopped. Oh my god! <gasps> that was so stressful. Like, why was it giving, making us choose so fast? Like, I understand. I guess that's making it more realistic. Right. But, gosh, that was like I, I took a test earlier today. Like the. CLA assessment thing, um, and uh, that wasn't that stressful. This this was way more stressful. All right, so it was all alone in a room full of strangers. It was unnerving to think about, but at least I wasn't being questioned left and right anymore. Suddenly, though, my mother, my mother, my mom pushed her way through the crowd to me, bringing along someone I didn't know. Oh, it's the son. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. Watch him be ugly. This kind of gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. Oh, uh, uh, he looks like Ricardo! Kind of. And my mother said a man who looked only a couple of years older than me. He smiled and held out his hand to me, silently asking for my hand. I bet he's a douche. Yeah, he's probably going to be the one who is like doing the, the rape then, and then everyone's going to say no. this. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. What an Anderson. American name. If, if we were to marry him, we would become <laughs> Naomi Lewis. <laughs> As I placed my hand in his, he raised it to his lips and kissed over my knuckles. I felt my face burn slightly at the gesture. Andrew smiled at me before- Ooh, are Incubi gonna get jealous? Oh, I hope so. Ooh. I'm honored to be invited here. My mother smiled at both of us, which made me slightly concerned. Why was she so excited? Oh no, it's we're gonna get engaged. Match. Yeah, oh. we're gonna get so engaged and so not in love. So, 
Um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. Thank you, I left it to my servants. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Andrew then chuckled nervously, <laughs> bringing a soft fist to his lift to cover his laugh properly before <laughs> smiling at me. Oh. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. <laughs> I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. So that I can do things to you, like take you on a date. Huh? Why? So I can do things to you, like take you on a date. He used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. <laughs> yeah, I really wish I got paid for that. <laughs> well, you didn't get the house. Oh, yes, that's true. Oh, wow, I didn't know he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. I looked to Andrew, who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off, and I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I wasn't able to find out. I felt something walk up beside me, causing me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad, giving his cold stare to Andrew, who suddenly became tense. So, you're Look at his face. <laughs> like, aww. Aww. I just wanted a skateboard. <laughs> I'm sorry. Andrew's body twitched slightly. Whether it was fear or insult, Andrew locked eyes with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. It irked me how fragile the air had become, enough to break at the wrong world. You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. I want to be on the top. Well... I stared at Andrew. This guy wanted to take my grandfather's position as CEO? I thought the vice wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. I'm merely testing the boy's conversational skills. Nothing wrong with that. Of course not, sir. And polite as well. If, if you'll excuse me. I have to go pee. <laughs> Some came out. Oh, gosh. Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family to the crowd of people. Should we follow him or stay put? Ooh, let's follow him. I quickly followed Andrew, wanting to be sure he was alright. I felt a little embarrassed that my dad put him on the spot like that. I had to apologize. We wound out at- oh, The stars practically danced on the grass as we stood in the backyard of the mansion. It had been my first time in years being out there, but my thoughts weren't on the nostalgia. Hey, Andrew? Andrew turned to me in surprise. However, his face was completely red in both embarrassment and humiliation. I felt horrible. Oh, I am- um, I didn't see you or hear you following. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. I should be the one to apologize. What for? You didn't do anything wrong. I mean for the way my dad behaved. He shouldn't have been so... Oh no! No, it's fine. I mean, I should have expected it and been more prepared. No, really, my dad's an asshole. Andrew rubbed the back of his neck and gave a goofy grin. It was intriguing seeing Andrew's professional side and then seeing a goofy smile away from anyone. Still, I'm sorry for that. It's not a problem, really, but thank you. We both smiled at each other before I reached my hand out to him. He tilted his head and raised an eyebrow in confusion. Naomi. My name is Naomi. Aww. An understanding, his smile returned before he took my hand gently and shook it. That's a pretty name. I'm happy to know it now. No, yeah. it's not that nice. I, I had the same name as one of my best friends. It's um, kind of awkward. It's, it's very awkward. Sorry. I'm, I'm not like adjusting my feet here. We're one in a million. I have to disagree with you. It's much better than Andrew. I mean, who names their kid Andrew? America. That's true. Sorry. A lot of people do. But how about Axel or Ace? Fun Something story. Cool like okay. that. Fun, fun story. So the book I was reading, one of the guy in the harem's name mm -hmm. was Axel. Oh, good. He was rugged. You know, someone in Kingdom Hearts 2, which you haven't played yet, I is named Axel. I know you have to finish the Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, and then there's a character in One Piece called Ace, so he literally just wants to be named after characters. There's no time in game where there's a character named Ace. Cool. Alright. I couldn't help but laugh at him. He was pretty chill for a guy who was supposed to be Vice President's son. He grinned and laughed along with me. Until he raped me. Hey, we don't know that's gonna happen yet. Oh, sorry. I don't know why, but I felt warm. Whether it was in the almost non-existent breeze or the situation we found ourselves in, it felt nice. Is he an incubi too? No! Is that what Incubus. Incubus. Lewis. Lewis. And just like that. <laughs> Go ahead. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the feeling had vanished. We both turned to see my dad at the doors of the mansion, staring at Andrew with almost a deadly glare. Andrew straightened up, trying to maintain his business posture. Yes, sir? Your limo is in the front. The driver has requested that you return home. Now. Oh, all right. Thank you, sir. Andrew quickly nodded to me before speeding back into the mansion to leave. As I took a step to follow, my dad stepped in front of me. Dad? I don't want to hear it. Do not become friendly with him. He wants to take the company away from us. You have no reason to be friends with him. He's cute. Before I could retort, my dad turned away and walked back inside, muttering about how the party was nearing an end. Wow, really short party. This is my house, like... You can't decide when the party ends, I decide when the party ends. I saw it and entered the house as well, waiting for the party to end immediately. Eventually, only Susan, Naomi, my parents, and the incubi were left. The real party. Oh yeah. My dad suddenly walked over, or is it James, and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared up at him, a wave of confusion washing over my face. What? You did good tonight. I'm proud. To be an American. Oh, thank you, Dad. Keep it up, and you'll be a good CEO. But I want to be a clown. I just want to be a clown. Oh, right. All right. Your mother and I have to leave. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. Why can't they stay the night? Uh, oh, right. Thanks for having us. It was a great party. We'll come visit tomorrow or something. All right? Okay. We'll see you. Right. See ya. Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Did she sound a lot more like stereotypical <laughs> Asian in that sentence? Yeah. <laughs> Will do. Oh, there they are. Hey, Dad! I thought you left. Dad. You're back. How far the remaining guests left the building? All but my dad waving back to me. With the last of the guests gone, I sighed and sat on the staircase. I'm exhausted. Whew, that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Hey, Sam. Hey. Give her a break, man. She was getting interrogated left and right. Thanks, Damien. She Sebastian. handled herself the best she could. Thanks, Damien. As expected, princess. Thanks, Dad. If you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We we'll, can clean up. We'll do, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Sam. Hush, Sam. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Are you guys sure? Positive. It shouldn't take long. Ho ho ho! It didn't take long to find you little shits after all. Dad? Malik. I felt a hot Malik's. shudder run down my spine. The voice from my dream straight from my nipples to my clit. Woo, <laughs> 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 okay. Next part. The voice from my dreams echoed through the air into my ears. I looked around, panicked alongside the incubi. James placed a hand on my shoulder, trying to remain calm. Don't worry. No one will hurt you. Okay, then. Are you sure? Are you really Where sure? Where is this dude? You're probably right, like, in front of us. Or the ceiling. Oh. All of a sudden, her head shot towards the door, is finally pining down. Pinning down. Oh, pinning down. In the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung open, revealing a sight I would never expect to see. Oh, he's red. Uh, Skin red as blood, eyes black and gold piercing into mine, roughened up clothes, and a pistol in his hand. I saw a monster. He looks like a sunburnt boy band. Yes. Oh, there's a chick. I covered my mouth and tried not, uh, to not scream at the sight. <laughs> Dry blood covered the bandana around the neck as he smirked at me, and the boy is around her. Oh, around me, sorry. I can't see. I really probably should have. Besides, the red-skinned man was a similar-looking woman in a matching thug-like clothes. Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? She like she has. You really didn't think I wouldn't blind you, did you? Hey, She's you know what? It's not it's red. Just, Her skin is oh red. Oh my gosh! Oh, what's the matter? Oh, he, they just read that. I hoped you would, you piece of. All of a sudden, the man raised his gun at Sam's face and instantly pulled up. No! <laughs> that end. We all gasped in shock, instinctively expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, but... What? What the fuck? What? What should have been a headshot ended up with a loud but empty blank shot. The pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over in aggravation. 
Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after its first Why the fuck would you walk? This place is protected. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. Oh, what the fuck scene. is that supposed to mean? The man growled and threw his gun at Sam. Can't, can't protect you against that, can it? <laughs> he was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple of times before sliding further away, hitting the wall in a final stop. As it stopped moving, the gun faded into black flame that faded into the air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. Oh. Malix. That was his name. His existence resonated in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked at Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did. This place was protected by... Magic. <laughs> it would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables hellborn magic. Malix's grew, face grew to that of an extreme anger, his fist tightening as if he were crushing a stress ball. And what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Um, the fact that you're not strong. Also, it's really rude to do. Mm-hmm. Social cues, really. Yeah, you need to learn that. Alright, out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took the chance to stand up to him instead of being powerless like I was in the dream. Get out of my house, leave him alone, Ooh. or fuck off. We can fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. Malix suddenly laughed wildly, staring at me. <laughs> whoa, whoa! What the bitch out of her Hey. What is this? The reverse harem or something? <laughs> he knows. He knows. Malik grinned at me evilly, walking closely to me. I can't let Duck run. What? Hey! Let him go! I'm oh, sorry. Oh no. Well. Well. Can we go back? Well, we, we'll look that back up when we, uh. Oh, I guess. Wait, is there a back? No. No. That's alright. There's only That's skip, right. but we can't do that yet until we go through the movie. Sam! Eric! For some years I could Sam had punched Malik square in the jaw, forcing him to lick my- Oh, he grabbed us by the hair. Okay. As I fumbled back, Eric caught me in his arms gently, pulling me away from Malik and back in their group. Come on, Sam! You and me! Right here! Let's go! Come on, asswipe! Oh gosh, please. Wow, I, love I love Sam, Sam style, huh? Like... However, before both could fight, the woman stepped forward and placed a firm grip on Malik's shoulder. That's enough, Malik! Oh, she's what? Nice. Who do you think you're speaking to, woman? Uh, excuse me! Who do you think you're speaking to, Malik? I'm gonna put this on the bed. Okay. Well, yeah, we're just sitting on my bed. We did fix it that one time. It's not like, scooted out from the wall, man. Okay, uh, are we both in the shot? Probably. Yeah, we're good. We're good. The girl who's going to help you kill them. Just not now. Not now! I swear the girl spoke down at Malix. She looked at the same, just like pure evil. However, she seemed to be concerned for Malix, or for me. There's five of them, and two of us. Even if we come back with the gang, they can have the place surrounded by human police. We shoot everyone! You can't just shoot everyone. That does not deal with your problem. <laughs> you can't just shoot all your problems away. Think! If we shoot everyone, we'll be hunted. And it'll be a matter of time before makeshift paladins come and try to exercise us. Oh, well. Oh, well, we need some exercise, you know, keep in shape. All that. The two growled at each other. If they could even use their magic, I could sense that fire would glow from under their teeth. Malik grunted and glared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his finger like a knife. <laughs> Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean none of the curse words before? No. It all came down to this. Oh, okay. Then Malik turned to me, moving his finger to point directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. <laughs> Step outside. I dare you! Oh man, no we can't. Oh gosh, so it's just gonna be so <laughs> Yeah, we didn't get to do that, did we? With that, Malix and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I once alone. I felt my knees give out from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn to catch me. Whoa, whoa! Are you alright? Oh, Sam, you can! 
Next is gonna be like, well, yeah, don't, don't think. think. What? Mostly tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. That's why you don't do that. That's why you don't bleed everywhere, guys. Yeah. Oh my God, uh, We should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. For once, they have literally never agreed on anything else. Ever. I stood up and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps Malix left behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in fear of his words. Malix, was he a demon? The red didn't give it away? That son of a bitch is not a demon. He's a devil. Oh, there's a difference. Okay. Yeah. A devil? There's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know. as hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. We actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons, like us, know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order, and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. This was so confusing. Demons and devil and magic all existed and it happened to land in the middle of it? What do we do? You're safe. You've been protected as well. What? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. Oh, thanks, Grandpa. I couldn't believe my ears. It was the third day of surprises, and this one took the cake and being the most surprising. I felt my head spin once again. What, what did, did I, I get myself into? <gasps> I'm a first hero! Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. We'll <sighs> kick his ass right now! Until then, we'll protect you as much as we can. If Malix comes back, we'll be here for you. But what about going outside? Won't he... Like we said, you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? That is true. Well, yeah. I felt somewhat relieved. I was mostly safe from Malix. Still, I could not help but feel very nervous and apprehensive about the future. The boys were safe here to train and become stronger, but what if Malix did the same? Even more so, I was lost about how my grandfather knew about magic. I had to find out. At least I had time. I went to bed that night feeling nervous. Despite the words of the incubi, I felt like a target to something I had never been able to explain or prove. Magic? Devils? Demons? How did this even happen? Should I even really meddle with the situation? They were only staying until they after they defeat Malix. That's right. They said they'd only stay until after they defeated Malix. After that, my life would go back to normal, temporary insanity, as Kay would say. The question was then, what would I want them to leave? Would I want them to leave? Sorry. If my life went back to normal, then I'd have to care for the house all on my own. I'd have to be a focus on my life instead of being distracted by the boys. I'd have to. My life. My life. Where was my life going anyway? I was under pressure from my parents with only my friends and the boys to comfort me. Without the boys, I'd have no way to hide from my responsibilities. <laughs> I wish I had a harem of boys to hide from my responsibilities, like graduating. Enough, let's just sleep and deal with tomorrow and when it comes. Defeating my sense of thought, I forced myself to sleep, unsure of what tomorrow had planned for me. Hopefully, whatever the future had for me, I would be ready for it. I promise to be with you forever. You're so important to me. I swear I'll give my life to you. Please, let me love you. I'll be by your side, always. I can't imagine living without you. I want to be with you. I love you. Oh, wow. Did we have our best friends, too? Like, in that in that patch? It sounded like it. Oh, nice. I slowly opened my eyes, letting the voices of my dream echo in my head and force me awake. I rubbed my eyes before sitting up and looking at my clock. 7 a.m.? Why am I up so early? I fell back at- oh, this, is, this girl's the same as I am. I'd be like, uh, I'm going back to bed. 7 a.m.? That's not a time. Oh, wake me up at night. Uh, trying to go back to sleep. However, something kept me awake. Why? It's too early to even be alive. I gave up and sat up, staring at the fireplace across from my bed. A sigh escaped from between my lips before I threw my legs over the side of the bed. What to do at 7 a.m. in the morning? 
make some coffee, work on homework, explore the house. Ooh, let's explore the house. Yeah, we haven't seen like any of it except the two, the main lobby entrance area, the kitchen, and this bedroom, right? Mm-hmm. I decided it was a good idea to wander around the house. I never really explored it much as a child, so there was bound to be new surprises. Well, come on, Phoebe. Let's get on the picture. I stood and exit in my room, hoping the boys were still asleep. I began to wander the halls on my end of the house, opening each door to find what each room led to. Quickly, I found an old office. A desk and chair sat by the far side of a large bookshelf of documents and memorabilia donned its nooks and crannies. There was a couple pictures of me growing up peeking from out. Is she the only grandkid? Walked I think so. The oh, okay. Into the room. I don't believe I've been in here before. I tried to recall the memories of ever seeing this room, coming up with nothing as a result. This room was new to me. Did I want to deserve the furniture? I'm curious. I gently opened the shelves and any drawers I saw in the room, and a couple of them were books and even sewing kits. I assumed they were used for my grandfather's toys, so I left them alone. One door, however, was locked, no matter how many times I pulled. Grr, come on, open. Nothing. It would not budge. The drawer beside it, though, did, revealing a laptop. He has technology? <laughs> yeah. Why is there a laptop in the drawer? I lifted it from the- Yes, my Netflix! I lifted it from the drawer and carried it over to the desk and chair, opening it. It was a high-tech laptop with a retina scanner as a pass lock. I was not sure whether or not to try and unlock it or not. Let's try, try it. I decided to try it. I turned on the computer and leaned my face near the retina, lighting the camera up with my eye. To my surprise, I heard a ping come from the computer before the screen opened to a desktop. Huh, look at that. On the desktop were documents and folders labeled with different aspects of the Anderson Company. Taxes, profits, but the bylaws, products, the list went on and on. If I really did want to become a CEO of Anderson a Toy Company, I had everything about it in my fingertips. Dad would sure be impressed. One icon, however, stood out from the rest. Rago. I double-clicked the icon, but no window came up. Instead, I heard a large click come from the drawer that was locked. Oh. What the... I slowly left my seat and walked over to the drawer, attempting to open it again. It slid open smoothly in the direction of me pulling my hand, revealing two books. One was a plain black journal with a tie to keep it closed. The other was bound in leather with cryptic symbols all over the cover. Oh, now we're going to deal with magic. Magic? Well, we've been kind of dealing with magic. Uh, I took out the journal and skimmed through it, seeing my grandfather's notes. They were all detailed explanations and opinions on his findings on demon magic. Oh, good. We'll understand everything about this. He really did know about magic. I sat down at the desk and read through the journal further, finding drawings and sketches of symbols and magic circles, each with their own different meanings and effects. It was fascinating. There was a page of important spells to them. I read through them, trying to memorize them into my mind. I don't know what came over me, but I started to feel more energetic and more powerful simply reading my grandfather's notes. I was suddenly aware of the energy that surrounded my body and the power that was around the house. The more I read, the more powerful I became. However, my mind suddenly froze and I found myself walking back to the drawer, putting the book back and closing the drawer. The lock reset and I snapped out of it. Huh? What? I shook my head and looked at the drawer, realizing what I had done. I walked over to the desk to reopen the lock, but suddenly felt the need to stop. Something held me back and didn't want me to pry any more than I already had. I was curious beyond belief, but I obeyed my thoughts for now. Eventually, I would come back and look into it. I returned to bed, feeling the weight of the morning drag me under the covers by to try sleeping in. I had energy, but I wanted more sleep. It was Sunday and nothing was happening today. Come on, Ice, back to sleep. I shut my eyes and tried to slow my breathing. I looked at my phone to check the time once again. It was new, yet it felt like I had slept for so much longer. Why is time going so slowly? I sighed, got changed into normal clothes, and went out to the main hall and sat on the stairs. Sundays were very boring. However, the muffled sounds of battle caught my attention. Huh? I quickly went out in the backyard in response to the noise I had heard. In the yard were all four boys practicing fighting. Sam was in the middle with the other four surrounding him and throwing punches and kicks at him. Sam, being the strongest as a bunch, blocked and dodged at almost all of them masterfully. Don't disturb them, or hey. Well, we won't disturb them. We'll watch. I just watched. The boys were very much out to their own world, focusing on the training they were in. It was better not to disturb them. I checked the time and decided to head inside to the kitchen. I was getting hungry, and I'm sure the boys would need to eat soon, so lunch was a must. Might as well make lunch today. It's been a while since I've cooked. Oh, good. We we are really good at cooking. If you want to cook, you can. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Whew. Lunch wasn't particularly hard. I decided to make 
Simple chicken and rice, cold cut sandwiches, or pizza. Pizza? Pizza. Pizza's always good. Pizza's always uh, Pizza's always good no matter what time of the day it is. Do we have any? Luckily, we had some pizza in the freezer to heat up. Pizza, Moore's baked with love pizza, had all the makings of pizza types, including pepperoni, sausage, mushrooms, and extra cheese. Just top it off, bake it, and serve. I'd have to get more. I placed the food in the dining room. However, none of the boys were there by the time I brought the final dish out. I carried the dish to the main lobby, catching the boys separating into different rooms of the house. Part of me wanted to go to one in particular. The other part of me wanted to just leave them alone and take the food in my hand to my room and eat. Maybe I could go out today while the boys would focus on training. Uh, find one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I quickly rushed back and grabbed a second food dish before hunting down one of the boys. Who are we going to hunt down? I couldn't find any of them. I could only shrug, though. They knew where the food was, so I went to my room instead and ate alone in my room. Oh, that's very sad. Uh, that's not my problem. I turned on my computer and started jamming music and ate food. As I ate, I began to think about going out. There were so many places to go, things to do. Um, Let's go to the arcade. Okay, yeah, because we didn't get to do that last time. I arrived at the arcade, ready to spend some cash on some fun games. I didn't want to be stuck at home on Sunday. Besides, the arcade always had something new to play, no matter how often you came. I began to wander the aisles of the machine, scanning over them to find a good game to play. I had played a lot of games already with Suzu, so just a matter of finding a good one. What finally caught my attention was a crowd of people surrounding a group of machines. I got closer and peeked through the crowd to see Suzu sitting in a racing game versus two other players who were at the same machine behind Suzu's. From the looks of it, Suzu was losing, and that was causing her anger craze. You go down! I stifled a giggle watching Susie remain playful under stress. She was adorable but feisty. Truly a spicy Italian. I'm spicy. <laughs> observed as Susie finally caught up to her opponents and passed them with ease. What the? Hurry it up! Later, losers! The crowd began to cheer, watching Suzu beat out uh, the guys and slide into first place. As the lights and sounds began to blare in celebration, the two jerks left the machine and hopped on Suzu and stood up. Oh, you accidentally hit the save. Oh, well, we'll save it anyway. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh... Good game, everyone! Slowly, the crowd began to disperse, leaving me standing to applaud for Suzu alone. Suzu smiled as she finally saw me, walking over to me. Hey! What brings you here? I didn't want to be stuck at home, so I came here. I needed to have some fun and over after eat yesterday. Yeah, man. I get you. Yesterday was full of tight-locked business guys, and me and Naomi were pretty uncomfortable, too. Really? I'm really sorry about that. Suzu laughed and waved her hand in the dismissal of it. She then leaned against the racing game and put her hand in her pocket. So what do she plan on doing here? Let's play a game. Yeah, let's play a game. Oh, really? What game do you think you could beat me at? This wasn't about this. I think we can do some major damage and beat our high schoolers in robot extermination. Suzu grinned from ear to ear, nodding before taking my hand and heading over to the machine in question. It was cute to see Suzu like this. She was always so adventurous to type, and I loved the side of her beyond anything. I guess that's what kept our friendship strong so for so long. Eventually, we did reach a large machine covered with images of robots disguised as animal mascots and blood. We took up our plastic guns and swiped our game cards across the credit slot, giving our credits to the game to play. You take left, I take right. As usual, let's go. The game quickly started up and we blasted our way through the hordes of robots, landing more headshots than professional shooter tournament players. Susan and I have played the game so often, I pretty much had become our go-to high score game. We always kept the top five spots on the leaderboard for ourselves. As we finished the first level, though, we were stunned to see the new leaderboard at the top screen. Someone told me I was what? Oh, hell no. We matched that level, right? Oh, oh gosh. Okay. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Suzu looked at me, a very familiar, deadly look in her eye. She was determined to regain number one. So was I. I was the mint. Uh, I knew what that meant. No deaths, quick reloads, and consistent headshots and Easter egg points. The whole experience itself ran two hours straight, with the main game and its sequel programmed into the machine. Once you finish one, you immediately began the next until you reached the end of the second game. At least I had some cutscenes to take breaks in between. And it'll be tough, but we got this. 
Suzu nodded before putting her game card in the breast pocket of her jacket and readying herself for the next level. I braced myself for a long game. Hey, Addison, take this a little more fun. Whoever had the least amount of headshots had to treat the other to lunch. It's almost 2 p.m., Suzu. There's such a thing as late lunch. All right, you're on. <laughs> and we were off. Virtual bullets, uh, bullets began to fly across the screen, slamming into the headshots of multiple... One by one, Suzu and I burned through the game like our lives depended on it. We eventually had a crowd form behind us, cheering us on and offering us food so that we wouldn't leave the machine. Most of them were guys who liked the girl girl on gun action, but some of them were actually excited bystanders. The girl on, on gun. gun action. What a weird... That's okay. such a, that is a thing, though. Like, is it? Yeah. Like, there's just guys who are like, oh man, this girl's into gun games and, and gun things. No oh, man. She's totally into me. No. Well, that's how I should go get a boyfriend then, right? Just oh, go, yeah. uh, go to the gun show. <laughs> I was going to go play gun arcade games because I'm pretty okay at those. There you go. We snacked a bit, breaking between cutscenes and level changes, but we remained true to our goal. Eventually, we made it to the final boss, a giant black bear robot with red eyes and deadly attacks. Let's go, Anderson! Oh, hell yeah. Right behind you. The crowd behind us began to cheer as we began our final battle. Our lugs were, <laughs> legs were a little wobbly. Our lugs <laughs> were a little wobbly. We were too into the game to care. All we cared about was a large red bar at the top of the screen, slowly emptying with each bullet as we fired into the boss's body. We only had a few shots left when somebody called out. You girls suck! Uh, 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 excuse me? Without missing a shot, Suzu and I replied at once. You wish we did! Oh. Oh! oh. oh. Uh, before landing the final boss to our opponent, the, de uh, the death cutscene flashed and, and played on screen. The scream of the robot bear booming between the speakers. Susan and I weren't excited just yet. We were waiting for the high score screen to appear. It was the final high score screen of the entire game, so it was the most important screen in our eyes. Come on, come on. The screen popped up, revealing our code SCA as the number one score in the in the game, knocking down the, our mysterious MAL opponent to second place. The crowd behind us went ballistic as Suzu and I hugged each other tightly in joy. It was like stepping over a major milestone, despite it being an arcade game. We did it! Woohoo! The second stat screen appeared, uh, separating Suzu and I from our hug of delight. In matters of accuracy, I was better. However, Suzu had more skills and headshots, making her the winner of our little battle. <laughs> alright, alright. Where to, boss? I just want some drive through food. I've been eating way too many home-cooked meals, man. I need at least one unhealthy meal. I feel that. Susie's family was indeed an Italian family, but they were too very self-conscious about their food. They were quite possibly the healthiest family I knew. Susie and I left the uh, arcade occasionally stopping to get praise oh, or be asked a question about our gaming skills. We eventually headed out to the parking lot where a decently used jade motorcycle said, so, Oh, she drives a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Susu quickly took off the chains and took a seat on the bike, getting out two helmets, placing one on her head. Do we not drive? I don't know. Okay. I, I, I guess not because uh, we, our dad was in charge of that. All right, well, apparently we don't drive. I followed her gesture and made myself comfortable in the leather seat behind her putting uh, on one of the helmets and wrapping my arms around her waist. Oh man, we're so good in the Suzu road. <laughs> I have ridden with her on a motorcycle before, so this was nothing new. Suzu ran up the engine and quickly sped out of the lot, driving into the streets toward us in fact. That's why. I Yeah, sounds good. We went through the drive-thru and ordered meals for ourselves before heading to my home. Uh, Susie parked in front, watching uh, me dismount from her bike. Thanks for late lunch. It might as well be dinner, too. <laughs> Ciao. Susie and I laughed. It was funny how the time flew by. What do we want to do? Want to stick around? Oh, sure. Huh? Oh, oh. no, nah, man. I gotta head back home and watch Francesco while my folks meet up with some big ways from the casino. Oh, okay. See you at school, then. Thanks, though. See ya! I'm sure we got brownie points with that, though. Yeah, I want to date you because I always date Chiri whenever I play Persona 4. <laughs> so. I waved uh, Suzu as she quickly headed out of the gates and back home. I smiled as I watched her go from before heading back inside. Suzu stuck around in my mind for a little longer than I expected, but I couldn't help but smile. The remainder of the night went surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued, uh, continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for it. 
Unsurprisingly, the food was perfect, but it felt a little empty without the boys to eat with me. They were most likely had already eaten, but still I felt lonely. No. I couldn't let it bother me. I ate and went back to my room to study and sleep. Surprisingly, I felt good going to bed that night. I felt like I could have a peaceful sleep after the previous rough nights I had. I felt good. Okay. All right. I think right here is a good stopping yep. point because we're at, we're over the one hour mark again. Mm -hmm. um, we're so we're gonna save here. We can just save on top of that file. Yeah, we'll just save on top of nothing. Yeah. Really happened other than us dating Suzu. Um, <sighs> but I hope you guys are enjoying this yeah. so far. I'm having a lot of fun. I am having a lot of fun. It's a lot of reading, but it's really good. Yeah. I was not expecting this game to be this long, especially for a free game. Yeah. So this is it's turning out to be really, developed. really good. Um, apparently, they're they're trying to get it for Steam for free. But, oh. um, yeah, it's it's been really good so far, you guys. Um, mm -hmm. I really like all the characters. Except yeah, it's going to be hard to choose. Dad and Dad Jr. Dad and Dad Jr. <laughs> except for those two. Uh, it's been really good though, and I like that there's like possibilities that you could date your friends. Like, yeah. well, I mean that's not confirmed, but it's, that'd be a lot of it's fun. It's not confirmed, but but really, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, maybe I'll, we have to unlock it. But yeah, I'll date Suzu. Yeah, man, she's spicy. Wait, wait, what were you saying earlier? She's spunky. She's spunky. She's, she's spunky. really sassy and spunky. Naomi's really cute. Damien's really sweet. Other um, Naomi, which is us in yeah. this case, is. Yeah. I really like her character too, though. Like, mm -hmm. she's not just bland. She's very. Yeah. She's she's very defined she's in her character. She's a firecracker. Yeah. So I like how she's not afraid to slap people. Yeah. I, like I mean, we we kind of we kind of make that happen, but right. I like that we had an option to slap people. Okay. So right. this will probably be the last one for tonight. So uh, we will see you guys Next later. Time we'll Bye. play it later. Bye. Bye. Bye.